Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new to the series, in each episode we take a random viewer suggestion and try to make the game mechanic. As a disclaimer, I try and create the mechanic in real time, so if it isn't the optimal approach or you spot a glaring hole in my logic, take it with a grain of salt, as this is an unedited first crack at creating the mechanic. Also, the project that contains this episode and every other episode will be in the description box below. Anywho, today it seems like we will be creating some sort of camera mechanic, which has been suggested by C Sharp Game Dev. They commented, Suggestion, a camera that follows the player and zooms out as needed to adjust to the game world. This would be on theme with the series and continue the path of 2D game creating. So from my logic, we're going to create some sort of camera system that zooms out and shows more of the game world if you need it to be a little zoomed out and zooms back in when we need it to be a little bit zoomed in. Something that would be good for, I don't know, something like a platformer. So with our mechanic now picked, let's go into Unity and give it our best shot. We are in Unity and I have created a episode 8 folder and an episode 8 scene. I am now in the blank episode 8 scene. And as always, let's come over to our hierarchy, right click, create a new 2D sprite, and I'm going to make it a square and call it player. I'm now going to add a box collider 2D and then duplicate the player and name it to ground. Let's move our ground down and scale it out. Now let's click on our player and add a rigid body 2D component. And now let's add the player controller component from the first episode. I'm going to open that up and use transform movement and let's set the move speed to 3 which we've been using consistently throughout all these episodes. Let's hit play and make sure everything works as intended. The key player falls down and I can move left and right and this is going to be a good starting point for our camera zoom script. Let's uncheck play and I'm just going to build out a little bit of a level here. So let's move this ground up here. Let's move it down here, and maybe this is where we're going to zoom out. Let's put a little gap here. We can add a jump script or something along those lines after this. And I don't know. This seems like a decent amount. And down here, let's just make this bigger. I don't know, something like that. And move this over. And we have some sort of level now. Let's move our player up top here and hit play. Well, first let's add that jump script in. So I think it's just called jump controller. Okay. And we need a few things for that. So let's create the ground ray transform. So I think it's called like ground ray or something. And move it to his feet. Click on the player. The ground layer is ground. So I'm going to change all of those the ground ray in the ground ray uh, he can have one jump uh, I don't remember if this is supposed to be a big or small number let's start with like 250 which is for like forces also I didn't mention it but this script is from episode 2 of the series um, let's make all these ground and let's hit play and see what happens I can jump, so that's good. And I'm not flying off the screen or anything. I would probably increase the jump to maybe like 300 though, so we can get a little bit higher. Let's do that, and let's do 350, see how that goes. If it's not that much, I'll just give a double jump. That's a pretty good jump. So you have the works of a basic platformer. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the camera follow the player and then probably around here we'll have some sort of collider or trigger and it'll make the camera zoom out so you'll be able to see more of the upcoming level. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use Cinemachine. Uh, first off I'm just going to make an empty object, make this a little bit neater, call it level and drag all of our grounds underneath. It just makes things a little bit tidier up here in the hierarchy. So let's add the Cinemachine package. 
So window package manager, make sure you're in the unity registry and let's start typing cinema machine and just hit install. Okay, now that the cinema machine is all installed, uh, let's just exit out the package manager and let's right click in our hierarchy and create a cinema machine 2D camera. And let's just call this zoomed in and let's assign the follow target to the player and take a look here and see what that looks like. It's already really zoomed out in comparison to what it just was. So let's change this orthographic size to something like five. And that's kind of where it was before. I think it actually might be exactly what it was. And then let's duplicate the zoomed in. And let's change the orthographic size to, I don't know, say 10. So double of what it was. We could even take this a step further and make it go a little bit further than what the player can see. So we can right click on our player, create an empty, and let's call this zoom out follow target. And it'll give us a better idea of exactly what's going on. And if we don't like it later on, we can always change it back. Let's also rename our zoomed in one camera to zoomed out. That way we don't get confused later on and the follow target can be the zoom out follow target. Now let's take our zoom out follow target in the scene view and just drag it over a little bit. We can actually just keep going a little bit further and further until we're somewhat happy. I'm just going to leave it at five and then we can see more of our level. And then as a demonstration, let's switch from our zoomed out to our zoomed in and we can just disable the zoomed out and it will automatically switch. So this is the zoomed in view and this is the zoomed out view and you can see it's a little bit nicer and this is probably a very easy way for beginners to be able to make two different types of camera views. So with that in mind let's go ahead and start creating the script for all of this and let's go to our project and right click create a C sharp script and let's just call this I don't know camera zoom controller and with the script created let's open that up in vs code in vs code let's head up to the top of our script and let's create two variables we are going to create a serialized field and then a private game object and let's call this zoom in cam and then another serialized field private game object zoom out cam. And if you want to take a guess at what we're doing, we are literally just going to disable and enable the cameras. And hopefully Cinema Machine will work out all of the kinks and do a nice smooth transition between the zoom in and zoom out cam. So why don't we go ahead and create a, another serialized field and let's just make a private bool, which is just true or false, and just say zoomed out. And this will just help us keep track of things later on down the line, especially if you're using this in your project, when you want to make sure it's zoomed out or zoomed in and start doing checks like that. We're just going to do something very, very easy for the purpose of this video. And all we're going to do is a on trigger enter. So let's just get rid of the start and update here. And let's just say on trigger enter 2D. And then I'm going to space this down because that's how I like it to be. And let's say if other dot game object dot tag is equal to zoom out. And if it is equal to zoom out, then we know that we need to zoom with the camera. So zoom in cam dot set active false and zoom out cam dot set active true. And then let's just say zoomed out equals true. And that's just going to check the little box off so we know that we're zoomed out. And then for zooming in, it's literally going to be the exact same thing, but we're just going to enable one and disable the other. 
So let's just copy and paste this if statement, drop down a few lines, paste it in, and let's just say zoom in here. And we are going to enable the zoom in cam, disable the zoom out cam, and we are no longer zoomed out. And let's save that up and head back into Unity. Back in Unity, I have a little bit of a warning, just saying that that Boolean variable is assigned but never used. And that's because we're not going to be using it for the purposes of this demo, but you might want it in your own project. So let's just clear that error and go to our player, scroll down and drag the camera zoom script on. And it just needs a zoom in cam and a zoom out cam. So let's drag those in, zoomed in and zoomed out. And we still have this checkbox, but don't worry about that just yet. Let's create an empty object and call this zoom out trigger. And up in our tags, let's create a new tag and call it zoom out. Click back on our zoom out trigger and assign the tag. And now let's add a box collider 2D component. And we can stretch this up and let's make it a trigger. So we can now place this wherever we like. I'm going to reset the Z position and then we can duplicate the zoom out trigger, rename it to zoom in trigger. I don't know, maybe you got some crazy platforming somewhere along the level. I'm just gonna put it at the end because kinda wanna be zoomed out for all of this. And we need a new tag. And let's say zoom in. And make sure you assign that to the trigger because it doesn't do that automatically. And that should be it. We're going to get probably some sort of weird funky business going on, but we will get to that in a second. So let's just hit play. And let's move over. And now it zooms out very, very slowly. Let's see if I can complete the level. I can't, so I'm going to cheat and give myself some double jumps. And we're moving along. I don't really know what to do for this jump. Something like that, it's kind of cool. And then it zooms back in. And it'll stay zoomed in until we hit another zoom out trigger. So everything seems to be working as intended, which is pretty cool. So let's uncheck play. And we can come over to our main camera and scroll down to the Cinemachine brain. So the default blend is what happens when you switch from one Cinemachine camera to another Cinemachine camera, which is what we just did. Well, what it's going to do is it's going to use the default blend because we haven't set exactly what blend we want of an ease in and out. And it's going to be a two second blend. So it's going to take two seconds to zoom out from the first camera and two seconds to zoom in from the zoom out camera. We can change this to something like one. And when we hit play, we should notice that it zooms out a little bit quicker. Let's head over to our trigger. And that's a lot quicker. So this would be a lot better for a fast paced platformer. Or if you want, you can also change it from one second to, I don't know, five seconds. And when we hit play, we come over to our trigger and now it takes a long time. And this would be good for some sort of cinematic approach where you want to slowly zoom out and reveal the scene. Now let's uncheck play. And I'm going to change that back to something like one second because I thought that was pretty good. So what happens if you want a really cinematic camera and you want the default to stay the same? Well, you can create these custom blends down here. Let's just create an asset just to kind of show it off. And I'll just put it in episode eight and main camera blends. Uh, sure, we'll just leave everything default. So 
So the zoomed in camera to the zoomed out camera will take a time of let's say two seconds. So when we're zoomed in and we're going to zoom out, it'll take two seconds. And then if we go back to our default, it'll be one second. So let's head over to our triggers. And that's a little bit slow. And it might make a little bit more sense to put these triggers side by side. We can just duplicate one and put it over here. So let's go over to our zoom out trigger. And it zooms out kind of slowly. And let's go to our zoom in trigger. And it zooms in pretty quickly. And now you know how to finally control each and every blend in your project. But that's about it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and maybe even learned a thing or two. Don't forget the link to the GitHub for this project, which has every single episode inside of it, is in the description. And don't forget to leave a comment with a suggestion that you guys want to see me make. And as always, I will see you guys next week.